Ah, goosebumps all over the place just watching that. And because uh, today is a big day in the world of sport, the Olympic Games in Tokyo will finally get underway officially with the opening ceremony set to be held later on today. And we are, in fact, uh, going live now to Tokyo. And we're joined by an absolute legend, a woman who won two gold medals at the Atlanta Games in 1996, 200 meters breaststroke, 100 meters breaststroke. Penny Haynes, uh, good memories for a lot of people. Penny, good morning, and uh, I, I suppose good afternoon to you out in uh, Tokyo. A, a lot of us have had debates over whether this day will ever come and whether it should even come. But how does it feel for you? Does it feel like Olympic, uh, Olympics opening day? Um, good morning to the viewers. Um, I can't say it feels like the regular Olympic Games. Um, I feel sorry for the athletes. They're certainly not experiencing what I experienced at the Olympics. But I think once it gets down to competition, you know, especially when it comes to swimming and in this beautiful venue you can see in, my, in the background, um, you have your own lane and you just get down to business. So it's wonderful being in Japan. I think the volunteers, everybody is doing a great job. They're trying their best. The facilities are great. It's just that, unfortunately, due to COVID, we don't have the freedom to move around and enjoy everything else that goes with the Olympic Games. Mm. And you would have had a, a couple of days to just get a feel of what the locals uh, are saying, Penny. Is there still pushback on day zero? You know what? Actually, we've been in this bubble, so we've had absolutely no interaction with the locals other than the volunteers at the venues, which obviously they are excited about the Olympics, so every feedback we get from them is positive. Um, so, you know, you get from the airport through all of the protocols, you get into a designated vehicle, you go straight into what they call a red zone in the hotel, and you can only move between your floor or your room to wherever you would eat and then to exit to get into the car to go to the venue. So there's absolutely no experience with regards to the culture and the local people, mm. Penny, unfortunately. Oh, uh, sorry to come in there. Uh, could you please just uh, give us a bit more about what your role is there? I understand you're working with world governing body FINA. What exactly are you yes. doing in Tokyo? So for pretty much since I retired, I've been involved with FINA, which is uh, sort of like FIFA for football. So FINA is the governing body of World Swimming. I've been on the Athletes Commission, and currently I'm the chair of the Athletes Commission. By virtue of that, I, I sit on the Bureau, which is the top body of FINA. And um, because of that, I'm at the Olympic Games, fulfilling a couple of roles. Um, Apparently, I just heard I'll be part of some kind of judiciary panel. So if anybody protests, then I get to make the decision whether they get punished or not. But, um, but other than that, I'm also representing the athletes. So I get to interact with them. And I'll be, uh, I guess, just enjoying the Olympic Games uh, at some point, possibly participating in the medal ceremonies. I expect that in swimming, we'll have at least one medal from Tatiana, possibly even gold. You never know. And uh, if I could have my way, I'd like to be part of that medal ceremony. But there are obviously other South Africans that would like to do that, too. Mm. And, and let's get to that, uh, uh, Penny, the, the pool itself. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that you didn't mention uh, possibly a medal from Chad Leclerc. I had a chat with you just after Chad's uh, uh, race in Rio. You were not very impressed with him, not because of his performance, but because of his antics. Uh, call it gamesmanship uh, against uh, uh. the great Michael Phelps. Uh, do you not think that uh, he has matured a little bit and, and will be able to put on a, a better performance this time around? No, I think uh, definitely Chad has matured a lot. And uh, my fault for not mentioning Chad. I think everybody sort of takes it for granted that Chad would be a medalist. So in my mind, I suppose the surprise would be a female not only competing at, at the Olympics for South Africa, but then meddling as well. So definitely, Chad, if he's in the race, if he's in the final, one can always expect something great from him. He's a, he's a real good racer. He hates losing. Um, as far as his uh, gamesmanship prior to the events in Rio, I think he's changed somewhat since then. And... Um, and, you know, over the last few years, he's really displayed awesome sportsmanship and really is somebody for the youngsters to look up to. 
So certainly, I think, apart from Chad and Tatiana, we always have swimmers such as Brad Tandy, who in the past in Rio, he made the final in the 50 freestyle. So, you know, possibly, I'm not sure how Brad's swimming right now. He's been based in the States, but he's always someone to watch out for as well. And then, you know, hopefully there will be some surprise swims from some of our younger swimmers coming through the ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, Penny, since your days, uh, I mentioned that you grabbed... Uh, two gold medals in Atlanta in 1996. South Africa has not really gotten to the levels, uh, uh, the, the lofty heights that we expected from there. Uh, Sydney 2000, Athens uh, uh, 2004, the days of Roland Schumann, Ray Nierthling. What's, what's been the issue in terms of overall Team South Africa? I say that because at the last games, we had 10 medals and we're hoping that we can get to 15, 20 this time around. I assume you're speaking about the entire team. Yes, South the, Africa, the entire team South Africa, not just, not just swimming. Look, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what we can expect from the other codes. Unfortunately, you know, we've had a few setbacks, I think, in track and field, as everybody knows, so we might compromise there in terms of a medal or two. Um, but I think we could we could definitely be on par with what we saw in Rio and hopefully improve. You never know. Um, there's a lot of uh, uncertainties coming into these games with regards to the athletes, their preparation. I think specifically one of the one of the things I would be concerned about as an athlete is that you we because of COVID they didn't have the opportunity to come and base themselves in a training camp prior to moving into the village. So usually one would come for about two weeks prior to that and acclimatize because obviously there's a seven-hour time difference. Our athletes haven't enjoyed that, uh, that privilege. Some of the other countries, I think, did do something to make a plan. Um, so I don't know, maybe by the time it gets to the second week, track and field, maybe those athletes will be in a better position. But for the swimmers, certainly it is a little bit challenging. Mm. Penny, as we wrap it up, how do we look at these uh, uh, games? Is it always going to be the COVID-19 games? Is that unfortunately the tag that's always going to be attached to the, the Tokyo event? I guess so. There's nothing we can do about that, but I don't think that should compromise um, the quality of the event. I'm really glad uh, that it is happening. I know some people have been pessimistic about it, but for the sake of the athletes, I'm, I'm pleased that it is taking place. Um, you know, some of the athletes are approaching the end of their careers. I think a couple might even retire after this. And so had it not been that these games do proceed, you know, they would have ended their careers, a lifelong dedication towards performance without perhaps seeing their best moment um, at the Olympic Games. So I'm pleased that everybody will get to compete. And, you know, those who really have the big match temperament, the true champions, I think they won't really find that COVID is a setback. I think that they can thrive under these conditions. Um, as the great Michael Johnson said, you know, pressure is a privilege to the top athletes. And uh, everything being equal, when you line up to race, it's the person who handles the pressure the best that ends up winning. And COVID obviously has added additional pressure. But I think we'll see some great performances coming from the pool and hopefully from our other codes as well. Penelope Haynes, thank you so much for your time. You represented South Africa with aplomb uh, in your day in the pool. Two gold medals in Atlanta 1996. And she continues today to represent the country. She is now with the world governing body, FINA, which is why she is in Tokyo at the, the Olympics in 2021 for the Olympics 2020. Let's head back now to Michelle Craig and Ayanda Nyati.